Okay, 50 and 50, this is vlog 47 and 50 vlogs, vlogs in 50 days. Um, wouldn't have happened without support of Netflix Pro G and Romenko. Uh, huge thanks to them for this, uh, helping me put this series together. Today I'm gonna to talk about dairy herd health planning. And um, I suppose this is one area that I cut my teeth as a young vet when I really got into this idea of prevention over cure, looking at coughing cows, calf scour, almost 10 years ago now and understanding that if we can prevent and be more proactive it's a much more profitable and sustainable way of farming and it's sort of an area I've been really interested in ever since. I've been lucky to do some um, extra studies and to grad search in dairy herd health in UCD, uh, cow signals and I got to travel to a lot of countries to other vets to see how they, did, how they delivered preventative medicine. Now in all your own calving systems um, it's, it's, it's often more difficult, um, more regular visits, you're, particularly probably more a high input type cow and it was really good to see that and I came back uh, about 10 years ago and people might have heard me saying this before and I was thinking how would you apply that to a seasonal calving system and really I drew a circle on a page and it was that fundamental changed how I looked at it and how I looked at how you would uh, deliver this type of system and it's about being pro proactive so how can we react ahead of calving time how can we react ahead of breeding and understanding that this lactation cycle for the cow is so cyclical to keep her in it to make sure she's profitable and productive and there's some key visits and I'll talk about that in the seasonal system ultimately um, what, what you must remember that I suppose as well is that there's a couple of cycles in the farm there's the lactation cycle of our cow we need to keep her in that system as long as possible um, and what influences that but there's another cycle and that's the young stock come out for a, a second cycle when they go on their two-year cycle looking at um, before they enter the herd and calving down it's 22 to 24 months on the farm and you really need just almost a separate plan for young stock and um, again that zero to 12 weeks is so important, looking at what mortality is like, what morbidity, what diseases are we getting. Check, you know, a plan for the first, second season, really focusing on uh, younger animals and vaccines, dosing, room and health and nutrition to make sure that they calve down in that 22 to 24 months in that seasonal system early. Um, so really important. So again, it's, it's that cyclical nature, December, calving, breeding time, where do we need to be on farm? And if you look at it, nutrition is an absolute key driver. So it's a multidisciplinary approach on a lot of farms. Um, body condition is such a useful tool to measure at herd, at cow and herd level where our cows are. And we don't want body condition loss between calving and breeding. We need the cows to build up that reserve before they calve down. Uh, not too fat, thin cows are a real challenge. And in any system, I look at it, um, you have your inputs and outputs, and I don't really, you know, it, it, low cost but a high input system. To me, it should be all about profitable farming. And if farmers decide what system they want themselves, um, picking the genetics and being consistent with that system, and ultimately looking at profitability, because dairy herd health planning has to make, make, make sense and make money for farmers. And really, I suppose it does make sense and it does make money because it will look at measuring a whole range. This is the beauty of what I found with dairy herd health systems and this is the last one I developed which is looking at a huge range of, of really important metrics that you can measure that will really impact on your farm animal health, your welfare and your profitability on farm. And then looking at the idea of what visits do we need to do to make sure that we're keeping an eye on them. So every visit it's really important that we still don't forget to look at cows and calves and look at the environment, see what they're telling us. Um, body condition score, all these really important things. Is there lameness there? What's the dome like in cows? What's, you know, what's, you know, is there a snotty nose? This visual assessment of the farm to see where things are. And every visit then needs to look at the metrics that we've set out as, as barometers for the farm and see if there's issues there and again every farm will have slightly different targets that they'll go after some farms will be doing a really good job managing lameness or mastitis fertility might be an issue calf health might be an issue where do you need your focus to go and diagnostics certainly play a role from forage analysis to milk analysis to mastitis uh, workups to any diagnostics and postmortems again with your with your dairy system you can look at bulk milk sampling for disease screening they all play a role and they must fit into the system as part of this and again all these metrics and information are no good unless we use them 
And then I have a very simple one, two, three rule. The whole visits are based on the premises of one, two, three. Well, three things. One, what's been done very well. The top three things that work really well. Second, the three things that are not working at the moment, the three biggest challenges based on that assessment on the farm um, and looking at what's happening on the farm and some measurements based on the time of the year. And then number three is three actions. The most, uh, the very most three actions between visits. So what happens is you start making decisions or taking actions on the challenges between those visits. Now, less is more here because if you start putting one or two actions in between each of these visits and see an improvement, and what we're ultimately looking for is, it's very hard to get perfection on farm, but it's the idea of progress. And I'll talk about my thought for day about the 1% rule. What this really can achieve is slow progress on a short period of time, but long term, this continued approach, you're always improving, you're fine tuning. So the four visits in a dairy herd health plan, as I would see it in a seasonal system, is pre-drying off. The cow is coming to the end of her lactation cycle, really important from a, a milk quality point of view, with the focus now on selective dry cow therapy, really important period for the cow. She's planning ahead for the season, uh, for drying off, for housing time, looking at you know what are the plans on housing, and then you look at cow comfort, cow flow. You review the year that's gone by, you look at some of the challenges that might have been there. Uh, and it's an important period for the cow. Uh, parasites, vaccines, this is a really good time to plan out for the season ahead as well. And then you go to your pre-calving visit, and this is quick assessment of it, obviously, um, but look at the things like negative energy, you're into transition, how, how, what's energy like? What are forages like? What are minerals like? Calcium becomes really important in the seasonal calving system, particularly subclinical hypocalcemia. I saw a lot of it last year in herds. And again, planning ahead for that. How are we going to manage all those things? Um, and looking ahead here, with no calves on the ground, how are we fixed for calf health? What are we feeding? What's the environment like? What's our plan? Have we written SOPs for the farm? You know, bigger farms would with multiple people working on them. What's the protocols? What's the training? Um, and then I suppose the, the, the third visit is to your freshly calved cows early in the season. What disease incidents are we seeing? What are VHBs like on bloods? What are, what are the cows telling us? Um, and we, metabolic monitoring of metabolic diseases like displaced abomasums, dirty cows, um, all those sort of things feed into how good or bad transition management is at the, on the farm. And because you have varying weather and seasonal systems, um, you can always have different forages and thing challenge that will be there. Ultimately, you're getting cows out to grass here in seasonal systems. What's the plan on inputs versus outputs for feeding for the, for the year? We do not want cows losing body condition. We want full rumens. We want cows healthy, eating, and productive. And then the fourth visit, is, a minimum of four visits, is the pre-breeding visit. Again, fertility drives overall herd performance. Good fertility keeps cows in the system longer, longer days in milk. In a seasonal calving system, we want that, that tight. What do we need to do? And I've covered a lot of these topics separately, but it's about the idea of pulling it all together um, and really looking at affecting change over time. The idea of dairy herd health plans or any herd plans is they can't be tick the box exercises. They need to be evolving plans that work. And, and metrics do play a role because they allow us to benchmark our farm, maybe off other farms, and certainly on where we want to go and are we achieving what we should be achieving. And it, it creates a, an alert system. And to get into the mindset, if you see issues with somatic cell count that you're reacting to them uh, quicker, if you're seeing a spike in clinical mastitis, you're asking why, what's gone wrong in the system. If you're seeing a lot of calf health issues, why are, we, why are they occurring? And then it's always about stepping back, maybe next year if you have a new issue on the farm, that you're stepping back in a more proactive approach to prevent it. Vaccines, dosing, all need to be timed uh, at key times of the year. Again, focusing on w w that program was, was, was developed to maximize her, uh, optimize herd health and also reduce antibiotics. But you know, mastitis, fertility programs, infectious disease and parasites, lameness is another one we really need to watch on a dairy farm. And again, at key times of the year, we can zone in on these and overall we can measure them. Um, but the measurements are key. Okay, so look, that was a very brief, it might not seem brief, brief overview of the idea of herd health planning. That it's evolving, it involves multidisciplinary, the nutrition, the environment, key elements to it. Vaccines, dosing and parasites, really important, but they won't make or break a herd health plan. They're part or key components in it. Um, I suppose my thought for today is really this idea of measuring what matters, first of all, but this 1% rule, uh, and this is an important thing to remember, the, the progress over, over, the progress over per perfection, uh, that it's, you know, we look at 
slow changes can really impact overall farm performance if we're continually looking at it, continually evolving. Perfection is very hard to achieve, but progress is not, and it has to be measured on, in a, with a herd health plan. So that's, that's my uh, message for today. Three more videos to go and 50 vlogs in 50 days. Um, happy safe farming, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.